Hey Radical Ones, on today's show, we discuss 1991's Nothing But Trouble with all three co-hosts. This movie stars Dan Aykroyd, Chevy Chase, John Candy, and Demi Moore. It's time to get radical. Hello there. It's showtime. What is this, trick or treat? Did I do that? I'm Sailor Moon, champion of justice. Daddy would have gotten us Uzis. The power is yours! <laughs> Welcome back, Radical Ones, to another episode of the Radical Retro Rewind Podcast. As always, I am your host, Radical Ryan Hunter, and I am joined by both of my beautiful, beautiful co-hosts, everyone's favorite brother, David, and the movie geek himself, Rob, for 1991's Nothing But Trouble. Welcome, gentlemen. Yes. Hello. Yes, hi. Hello. <laughs> hello. So, both separately wanted to do this movie, and I wanted to get everyone's take maybe when you first saw the movie and why you got us doing it here again today. So now I really love this movie actually as well. Rob, you were the first one to mention nothing but trouble. Ah, okay. That's what I was curious about. I'm like, I would have gone through a Hunger Games episode with this and been like, David, we're fighting to the death. I called it. I called it. No, I'm kidding. Um, (laughs) No, I remember watching this movie as a kid and I think that this is just one of those examples of how messed up my taste is. It is so off the rails and just so underrated and just movies that just really doesn't make any sense to anyone but myself. This is a clear example. I did like a sort of a rewind retrospect on a blog that I did like years ago. I always talk about this movie and I just love how unique and and just so like it's it's one of a kind honestly it really is so i know ryan's taste after getting to know him after <laughs> so many years and so i was like i know this is right up his alley let me talk about it. and then i found out that he's a fan of it so i was just like yes we have to do this movie much like john waters which brother david tell us your history with this movie i 100 percent with rob is saying i totally agree with him having actually watched it again it a little bit darker than I remember it to be in the sense of what actually occurs in Vulcanvania of- <laughs> <laughs> whatever it's called <laughs> it's like transylvania yeah i just remember this it's like it's like that fantasy thing i i actually put it up there with like a goonies like an indiana jones vibe like a romancing the stone vibe that kind of like feeling and i just remember it is it was quirky it was different it was chaotic and all that stuff everywhere too it's just like i don't know i i I've started writing notes i'm like it's like the goonies meets the devil's rejects but like pg <laughs> version <laughs> Those are actually really good. I had thought about this this morning as I was going through my notes as well. And I'm like, is it possible to call this a rom-com? Because it just seems like a movie that is literally geared towards getting those two together. Yes. And more. I don't know. I'm stretching here. But it just, there was a lot of focus on like who's going to be with who and there's a wedding and all of that so i don't know i just for some reason was like is this a rom-com or is it just really just a (laughs) comedy well it's perfectly described cross between psycho abbott and costello meets frankenstein the texas chainsaw massacre rocky horror picture show and things of that nature but much like most things we cover on this show a bomb with a i love how they quote it online saying a small cult 
following, meaning this is not still not a huge movie. But I don't know if I believe that. I think that there is a cult following. I small cult. I I don't know. I I don't know if that's being too specific. I just think that people know about it and they probably would talk about it. They just don't have a reason to. Yeah, I mean. Wh- I don't know how this would come up in conversation unless you are <laughs> praising the movie, but it's, there's, I don't know, it, because it's so far off the rails, there's really no way to connect it to stuff. I mean, yes, it is based on a lot of things, but it's just like, when would you ever bring this up? So, I don't know, it just really depends on your circle, I guess. So maybe it is a small, I don't know. I never believed it. I think a lot of people really do like this. We just don't have a reason to talk about it all the time. I have to say, anybody that's seen the movie, I've never had anybody say, I can't stand that movie. And then again, it like you said, it really hasn't come up in conversation. So for me, but I mean, in, in in the scheme of our lives, do we always talk about even the most famous movies? I mean, are we obviously what we do here on the podcasting? You, you we definitely talk about TV, television, movies, and pop culture. But yeah, when, when would it come up? I mean, if you if you went into a junkyard and it said, "This is like nothing but trouble here," maybe something like that. But I mean. How many people are hanging out in a junkyard? Well, it happens, but what about gross-out dinner scenes? I would think if anyone mentioned the scary movie dinner scene with that hands guy, but this, <laughs> when I think of gross-out dinner scenes, I think of nothing but trouble with that hot dog. But that's just me. <laughs> I, I want that train. I want the train for my kids. <laughs> <laughs> that train is really cool. I I honestly think if I think of interesting or cool makeup jobs, I think of this movie sometimes. Uh, I think they really did a good job on prosthetics and just, you know, staying away from a lot of CGI. But yeah, the makeup I think is great. The story was developed after a screening of the 1987 film Hellraiser, where Dan and his brother Peter Aykroyd went to see the movie that night. They attended it, and then afterwards, they noticed that the crowd crowd laughed as well as being horrified so they thought of coming up with a horror comedy movie and then Peter Aykroyd related an event in which Dan had been pulled over for speeding in upstate New York and was taken to the justice of the peace to stand trial in what he referred to as a kangaroo court after he was fined $50 and the justice of the peace invited Dan to stay for tea and he ended up staying there for four hours so this is where the the concept comes from it turns out that this was a troubled production because dan was looking for a director no one wanted to direct this movie so not only did he star in it he had to direct and then ended up playing one of the baby twins because no one would take that role as well so this was a horror of a production no pun intended what do you think about that this real life event inspiring this because honestly i could totally see some crazy shit like this happening in one of these small towns I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a lot that we don't know in some of those small towns, whether this is fabricated or loosely based on something, you you never say never. Honestly, I I think this could possibly, not in this exact way, but, you know, little towns have their own rules and whatnot. So, but that just teaches you not to go the scenic route, right? (laughs) Yes, <laughs> all these shortcuts you. and all like just stay the chorus stay on some cement and and chill okay you, you don't need to see everything and c- correct me if i'm wrong was that an early gps because uh, let me tell you when i watched this in the 90s i didn't even register i guess what that was and watching it this time i'm like whoa and the cell phone too the cell phone in the car well, that was the, the the epitome of luxury you if you were if you had a cell phone those days you were walking around with the size of a mo- tv monitor well so, yes yeah. this and i guess this is to show that these characters are well off they're from manhattan chevy chase hey you just passed the garden state parkway south Don't worry, I'll get you there. Demi Moore. Oh, no, cop. Driver, step outside the car, please. John Candy. Read him. Yeah, that's nice, thanks. The lower back, please. I got an itch right up in there. It's good, thank you. Not today, sir. This may be Valkenvania, but it is still America. Wouldn't mind, would you just write a ticket here, or we could settle it some other way, perhaps? That's not the way things work around here. What is this place? Revolving District Court for the Village and Shire of Balkanvania is now in order. The Honorable Reeve Alvin Balkanizer presides. Dan Aykroyd. Put out that dog rocket! Nothing but trouble. I'm so sorry. Hey, you know, you and I ought to spend a little more time together. I'd like that. Would you? 
Welcome to the last resort. You look pretty this evening, sister. Where someone's always shaken. And anything's better than house policy. What's house policy? But whatever man touches her, the one she keeps. What? All they wanted. Oh no, wait a minute. I just went through a damn stoplight. Was a little getaway. I think the two of you would make a perfect couple. You make this your bride? No. no, not in front of all these people, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Now, all they got was nothing but trouble. Ryan, tell everybody what this is about. I'm sure more, if not all, of your audience has no idea what we're talking <laughs> yeah, about. I, yeah, radical ones. My yeah. God. While hosting a party in a Manhattan penthouse, financial publisher Chris Thorne meets lawyer Diane Lightson and agrees to escort her to consult a client in Atlantic City the following day. They get late. Cons- right? Right? Just for sex. Yes, just to, and wait a minute. I want something I caught in the very beginning of this party. Not, and of course, I'm going to go off one of my tangents. He invites her up to the party, offers her a drink, which I think was like scotch or something. She, they're talking. She leaves. He drinks her glass of scotch and spits it out because he had soda in his glass. He was trying to get her drunk. It was so strong. He doesn't. He wasn't even drinking the scotch. He was giving her scotch, but Ooh, he was devil. having. You could tell he was having a soda or something because it was too strong for him. Did, yeah. Did you catch that? Yeah. He's a douche. <laughs> Went over my head as most things do. He Seinfeld. Uh, Thorn's clients, obnoxious but wealthy Brazilian siblings, Fatso and Ronaldo. I hope I'm saying that right. They still the show i have to say when they're they're in scenes they meet up and invite themselves along and then they take a detour off the new jersey turnpike and ultimately end up in a rundown village and after running a stop sign and then attempting to escape they're pulled over by dennis john candy are captured and taken to his 106 year old grandfather judge alvin (laughs) and then the shenanigans as rob would say would begin yeah the huge fun house of shenanigans yeah no this this plot is so crazy i mean it's so random it could honestly just happen to anyone but these yuppies are you know really show i mean honestly this is a movie that i think the 99 percent would appreciate because it's giving the one percent you know a run for their money like they are being punished for being so greedy and chauvinistic and all of this stuff because they just looked down on the poor. You know, this town became what it became because all of these heavy corporations decided not to put any more money into it and let it die, especially when they were having trouble. And I want to say they stole oil from them too. So like they were a really good source for resources, but then left for dead. And so any chance that this little town gets, it punishes those greedy white collar people who are like low-key criminals so this is sort of like an avengers like justice movie for the 99 percent. but yeah like chevy chase who plays chris like he is very very racist uh you know like mocks- in real life too actually i believe chevy chase is playing himself in this movie yeah. because <laughs> i gotta tell you not to interrupt rob chevy chase was verbally abusive to members of the cast and crew and told demi Moore her costume was too revealing and yelled at Aykroyd through the filming of this movie. And this is a Chevy Chase thing that he still does to this day. So I'm honestly not surprised by that. Thank God he's not in Only Murders in the Building, because then I couldn't. Remember. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank Only God. Bill Murray. I have a feeling he'll guest star in season two. I, I, no. I can pretty much guarantee he's going to. Why wouldn't he? I mean, don't let him time... abuse Selena. <laughs> when was the last time they were all together? This is the perfect opportunity for that, even though they didn't advertise him in this in the trailer because there was a lot of great guest star like cameos in that trailer but i have a feeling he'll pop up even if a voice i don't really you know it's too much of a coincidence not to have the three amigos there but i have a note that i said demi moore getting out of the elevator was giving me madonna breathless mahoney vibes from (laughs) from dick tracy like i think she looked probably the best i've ever seen her she looks fantastic in this movie i cannot believe on point and that white suit just yes like but is it a white suit but it's like shorts it's like a short suit it's cute i i really like i thought she looked great but also her character was not a damsel per se i mean the movie kind of made her into one later on but she 
is she she's a lawyer she's strong like she's independent but i love that she's like i'm a sucker for a pretty face <laughs> <laughs> i like <laughs> what about the part in the movie where she's like save yourself save yourself and, well, i don't care what i said before get your ass back here and save me <laughs> I thought, honestly, she was the most likable out of the characters, because at least she knew not to be obnoxious to these people's face as oh, yeah, Chevy well, Chase was, at least. Him. And then there's, oh my god, I, the little parts with the with the brother and sister, like in the car, push it, push it, man, push it. You got a, what did he say, <laughs> no. you have, a, you have a, a sports car or whatever? Everything on, the two on, of them did. Yeah, they was like, do it, yeah, do it, man. <laughs> I, and I made you a beautiful... <laughs> What did she do? Some picnic or whatever she made for the. I forgot that they get away. I was so happy because at one point I thought when they go into the moat later on that they ended up getting killed. I'm so glad that they they don't die because I would have loved to seen a spinoff with them and John Candy at the end. Oh, no, we did it! <laughs> we, we did, did it, it, man! We did it! Color us into the Bahamas, man! We're going to the Bahamas! We're going to the Bahamas! That was nice, man! We did that! Hey, 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 let's go! Let's play the road! We hitch high to a truck! Okay, we, we hitch high to a truck! That is completely. Congratulations, folks. They jumped out of a two story window. That's like, insane. They have such ugly food. <laughs> No, when they they threw the pickle at his sister, and that was the, the miss. What was she the the no, previous? So she, so she says. So he says, "I will not have my sister, who is the queen of the Mardi Gras, sitting at a table with a pickle shooting tray." Yet they were not having it. That's enough. I'm gonna flip out. Get behind me, baby. You people are sick, wicked, funky, misanthropic, codependent animals. And I won't have my sister, who was once the queen of the Mardi Gras, sitting at a table with a pickle shooting train. He's right. We gotta go. <laughs> we must go. She's like, we must We've go. gotta go. Me and my cousin, so she's like two years younger than me, I would make her watch this, and we would quote this movie yeah, so much. And most of it came from these two, because they were just so funny. <laughs> They were so funny. And I love it. They didn't get invited. They weren't. She was like, ooh, a road trip. Who's going on a road trip? And they were like, nope, nobody's going on a road trip. And they ambushed them in the parking lot. Like, I just think that's so genius. <laughs> you didn't think that we would be up this early or something. <laughs> she had no said. idea. Yeah. <laughs> and he refers to them as Brazilianaires. Is that what he refers to them as? Brazilianaires? Yeah. <sighs> oh, my God. And when they escape and they say the lake is, what do they say? It's toxic? It sounds Toxi like, it smells like San Paulo. <laughs> Can we please give it up to John Candy in a dual role? Folks, <clears throat> I'd like to introduce my granddaughter, Eldona. She's single and the best Class A mechanic in five states. It's adorable, Judge. She'd make an ideal wife, too. Genuine wage earner and struck dumb at birth by a thunderclap. My kind of woman. You look pretty this evening, sister. Doing something different with your hair? <laughs> <laughs> I guess our hero at the end of the day he plays well, this you know he he was a a character that you know did the legacy of the family out of obligation like he grew out of that he didn't agree with a lot of the you know decisions that the family came up with i wouldn't say he's like disloyal he just grew out of it like he just he was that one family member that wanted to see more he didn't want to take over the family business or anything like that he just wanted out but him playing the mute twin sister is legendary i wanted to ask you about this i don't know if it's just the decades that have come from the 90s up until now but the 80s and 90s men were not afraid to dress up as women for the sake of comedy not now i think it's starting to kind of come back but in between there was just this time period where it was unheard of or like people wouldn't take parts like this and not make such a big deal out of it somebody like john candy can dress up as a woman and nobody will bat an eye and then sort of in the early 2000s it just became this like you know taboo thing like what do you think about all of that just just them cross-dressing and like the meaning behind it or, or it didn't have to mean anything at all i oh honestly feel like in the 80s 
like gay culture was there, but it wasn't mainstream. So I think as we started to go into the mainstream and be in the forefront, that's when it became more taboo. So this stuff was going on. People were people were gay since the beginning of time. There were clubs, there was bars, but it was very undercover and in the back alleys and everything else. So when John but also, times. but also John Candy, you have to remember John Candy, first of all, is, is, was in a string of movies, everything from Spaceballs to Uncle Buck to everything i actually looked and i'm like i can't i was amazed he was actually in that also that more dramatic movie with ali sheedy i think it was with the with the mother uh, anyway Ooh. it was a serious role i think because he was a, considered a physical comedy actor in a, in many ways and maybe pigeonholed as that i think the whole like drag thing because when he was in harry crumb too he was undercover at the end who was harry crumb i love harry crumb i love harry crumb i love that i i, I can i picture that that song bonnie tyler i need a hero when he's going to get try to <laughs> intercept the plane i I still think about that i play that song like to pump myself up to do something like so, oh i love um, harry but Crumb. yes so good. i i think to, to your question i think that's probably for me that's what it was when things started to become more oh is he gay <laughs> And then you start getting that where you're not going to work in Hollywood because you're you're you know you can't play these parts or we're not or you're only going to get the the small part because you're you're now pigeonholed as a gay man. So I think John Candy being you know being that comedy, he transcended he transcended well, like comedy an, as, like it's almost like an SNL thing. I mean they're yeah. all they all do or you know any of the shows that that are comedy shows they do so they wear prosthetics they do different things. While he was never in question that I know of, I always thought he was gay when I was a kid. I always felt that like it's never come to fruition where they said he was so well i thought that uh him and his dual role was great and just the you know the idea of just having two candies in one scene like that was the first time i had ever seen him particularly do that so it was like super crazy to see them both in the same room and just his subtle you know like humming and hmm and his laugh like even that he was so good and he just made me laugh and it was very believable i believed that there were two different characters in this movie even though it was played by the same person El Eldona was just perfection she reminded me a lot of Elmira like I have a feeling like Elmira oh. grew up to be her in a way <laughs> I'll take you home and lock you in a nice little cage and never never ever let you out except to pet you and love you and hug you and squeeze you all up won't that be fun I'm gonna Start. hug you and squeeze you and never ever leave you I mean <laughs> she was struck dumb at birth from a thundercloud <laughs> was that one of the early use of that technology of putting the same actor on screen next to each other with that whole hot dog? It's the earliest memory that I have. I'm sure they've done it before, but I that is my earliest memory of it, I think. I also get Miss Piggy vibes, too, from him when he plays it, because he's... Me. I wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't be surprised if she was, like, inspired. <laughs> What is the... the cousin? Young man, it is basic human politeness to share your conversation with the whole table. So what's on your brain? Like, she looks like she should be in Reno 911. She's the Marilyn of the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah evidently, yeah. <laughs> She's the most, out of all of them, the most mainstream could pull off in, a, in everyday life. What's in your brain? <laughs> <laughs> now, if this was like a succession like series, these two would be fighting over the family business trying to figure out who was going to take over. I mean, they yeah, they could have done a lot with this, but she was knee deep in this whole operation. She, you know, is all about the family. And yeah, okay, so I just read on my notes, I thought that I had said this earlier, but I didn't. So the town was conned into taking stocks that aren't worth anything, turning the town into a coal mining. So that's what happened and the mining just sort of like killed the town in general so that's why they have such a huge grudge against bankers and accountants and politicians and stuff because they're the ones that yeah criminals exactly so just people with money so they're very specific about who it is that they target and then they just kind of just get away with murder just eliminating all these bad people one by one like do you see them as heroes or villains in this 
I mean, not that there should be a hero, I mean, for killing people, but just the idea of, like, trying that's to gain justice or whatever. I mean, that's also a, gr a great question. And I do love that whole twist at the end that the whole town is in on this. And look at them as, you know, doing a great service for the community. So it's, it's vin vigilante kind of justice. I think that, yes, it's murder and it's wrong in my mind. However, there are certain people in society, to be honest with you, I would be okay with if they disappeared <laughs> without any trace. But you heard it here first on the Radical the Retro Rewind podcast. The, They're the gonna play this is, back. The problem <laughs> is, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't recall mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. Your Honor. I don't recall that. I don't know because it seems like he has a per the family has a personal vendetta against bankers. So if you pull over a quote unquote banker, he's going to automatically kill them. Like when Demi Moore's character punched him in the face, she said, "You know, we could have been out of here." Do you think he wouldn't have been out of here because he was he had, the the judge in his mind already had that he's a banker. I'm going to get rid of him. I, so I don't think they would have made it out of there because then then they would have been witnesses. So oh, so but you don't think they would have gotten away? Oh, I kind of thought until Chevy Chase really like put his no, foot in his well, mouth no, and then they said, the twins said, ran a, or the sibling he said I have a personal interest in people like bankers so I think he would have I never let a banker go you know there's a scene where they kind of get through this maze in the house and they end up in like an <laughs> attic thing where all of the including Jimmy Hoffa's driver's license yes is, these he, newspaper this, clippings this is generational murdering generational traumas and things like that so i don't know if they would have made it out i don't think so i think the the very first like sign that eldona was interested in chris like he was going to either be there forever or i will eliminate you i mean if you like there's no way you're gonna get out of this so you're gonna do something for me if you want to live and i think the minute she looked at him it was over for them well, what about the drug dealers with one of the Baldwins? Holy crap, when we first get Mr. Mr. Bonecrusher, the Tiny Toon Adventures Happy World Land rides that they came up with this at place. But I think this is why, as a kid, I had an obsession for this movie for a little while, because going back, I'm like, what the hell did I think of this movie as a kid? Like, what did I think this whole thing was about? I think it's that wackiness of a house almost being an amusement park that kind of got me, but basically, they kill this whole group of criminals that they suspect or they pull over drugs knives pipes everything and they put them on this roller coaster to hell <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> There, I'll give you all your coke and your grinders and spoons and pots and gums and knives and all that back to you when you come out the other end. I mean really licked the bones clean i love this scene so much it's insane i love that song i love the fact that a <laughs> band decided to create a little ditty for this particular scene it's just oh, yes insane that something like this i just love it just that face and the teeth as the, like all of it is just perfection but like just the drop Thing from the floor all of that i think is great and yeah i mean the house is literally a character in itself yes That's the biggest reason as a kid that i watched it was for this house i was curious about all of the slides all of the secret passageways all of these wacky rooms they have a room full of like plush noisy toys <laughs> Just that's it. They just I, I you don't know where you get them. It's not like every banker has one in their car, and so they just collect them. Like they made a room just for the squeakiness of insane, insane. But there's also that piped in Disney World music when you get on the grounds, which I love on these old speakers, and they play this old timey kind of music. To their metal sculptures. Yeah, it's just it's just so crazy. And yes, and Rob's right. He has like a job of the hut kind of like trap door in front of his courtroom <laughs> were you gonna well, say something david i have a few things i want to add one i love the part when she's like is that nose rubber one <laughs> oh no oh um, no i think that that's a typical night out with baldwin boys anyway <laughs> Drugging, drinking, partying, cocaine, you name it. So I don't it think does sound about different. right, honestly. I have little notes here, but when he's running out and he and the judge says she she has your taint on her now. <laughs> <laughs> that went right all over my head. Oh my god, of course. Your taint. <laughs> and then <laughs> 
Wait, this is the best. I, I don't even know if this would be in sequence, but Demi Moore's character is left with these two grotesquely large baby-like guys. Well, what is it? It's The it, Hills it, Have it, Eyes. It's really yeah, like yeah, a Yeah, very Hills Have Eyes. Bobo, Bobo and Little Devil? Yeah, Bobo yeah, and Little yeah, Devil. <laughs> So there's two things going on. One, you have that they pulled over the digital underground. <laughs> it's amazing. Tupac, it's amazing. Tupac. I know, when yeah. Uh, so young, so alive. Didn't so I alive. also see Tiffany Amber Thiessen in that group? Or am I just like... there Was, was or, she? Or Carmen Electra? I think one of those models were there. Probably. I'm thinking about with the... She had like a... It looked like they had everyone in their mother in that town. So... <laughs> So Dan Aykroyd is trying to get out of marrying Eldona, and he says he doesn't think that he can basically provide what she needs. And he says, oh, don't worry about it. You can slip on a pud collar. Do you know what a pud collar is? I, I had to look this up. Don't know what not that is. A pud collar is basically a cock ring. It can be fancied with vibrators built in or simple leather or a rubber ring. It can also <laughs> include a studded or ribbed sleeve. He goes, oh, you can put on a pud collar. <laughs> He said it so casually, like, I've done this before. <laughs> I, I still... David bringing that education. This is uh, what John Waters' films gets to you. Do you see what happens? You start, and then you end up here with pud collars? Yeah, and to the point where you said earlier about the characters, this definitely, like, for Eddie Murphy, when he did multitude of characters, or coming to America. But yeah, Digital Underground, can we just have a moment with that scene? Yeah. So do they release people then? Or were they only released because they were there for the wedding and he just wanted to get rid of them because he was spouting off, you know? Or did he really appreciate the fact that they were musicians? I kind of read the scene that, you know, while they may look like they come from money, they are not there to corrupt, they're there to entertain, to make people happy. You know, they vibed with the whole music thing, like he plays the <laughs> organ. And so I think there was a mutual understanding that they're not out to get the little guy and that that's how i took it yeah the the people of color were spared and thank the lord because i was gonna be very afraid if they had done anything to any of them the cousin may have i don't trust her <laughs> but i love it and they also teased that the humpty dumpty guy was like right standing right on top of the trap door yes and they kind of hinted like are we gonna pull it but you know he got into the whole thing and was jamming with them and i just think that's amazing and like dance with them <laughs> so funny i and love that humpty hump was in here it works because everyone is a character but i just love that this was him he has a worked. fake nose and he has a fake nose yep exactly yeah i mean there was a little bit of just too much bonding and and too much common ground with this so i think they just let him go but i mean they do kind of hint on the idea of like oh if you're like not a heavy sinner but just like if you do drugs or if you're not contributing to the world there is a possibility they'll get rid of you but i think there was just a mutual understanding with those guys so they let them go but hey hold the harvest you gotta do me a favor though <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong in believing that it's implied that the hot dogs might be human? Go ahead there, folks. Set yourself up a couple of dogs. Because why are the bodies picked to the bone after they go through Mr. Bone Crusher? There's no I, flesh. Just no trace of DNA or evidence, to be honest. I, I didn't get that vibe. I mean, but there's nothing really to say that it wasn't. Ugh. But I just think it's just one of those, like, specific things with this town that they eat the strange and the foreign of hot dogs as well. That's kind of how well, I see meat, it. Well, meat is great. We dye meat to make it look more appealing. If you were to, like, cut up meat and let it it even in a fridge it would be great yeah like if you're a meat eater when you see red in there that's dye to make it look less like you're eating a piece of gray matter oh so those God. would be those would be stadium franks stadium franks would right. have to die that movement that With jiggle the they're serving dog no 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 hot dogs dutch country herefords prize winners hot dog 
<laughs> stadium pranks, you know, like they had before they brought in night games. He was Peter. so good at it. He was so with Hawaiian punch oh, through God. a gas nozzle. I love every bit of how country this town was. Oh, and, and Chevy Chase is like, you know, nothing like a good Hawaiian punch, warm. warm. And then we get Dennis like shaking his head, like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. nothing better, nothing mm. better. <laughs> <laughs> How about a nice Hawaiian punch? You know, there's nothing better at the end of a long day on the road than a nice warm glass of Hawaiian punch. I have to say that Dan Aykroyd, I mean, you guys can talk so much crap about this man, but for somebody to just think of this out of thin air, direct it, write it, like this was literally his passion baby, I'm assuming. He just really wanted this to be made. And like I said, we can talk about his comedic stance today, especially with like Ghostbusters and all of this stuff, but the man has a vision and I will say that comedians have the darkest minds mm. out there they really do i've said this before Great. they have the most work mind they will go there i mean just think about it we we are dealing with comedians saying the wrong thing all the time they will go there and that's the product of this movie is just let a comedian think and write stuff down for a couple of hours and this is some of the stuff that we get it's insane we should be terrified maybe Listen, of mr bone my brother's name out your mouth <laughs> <laughs> But no, I think Dan Aykroyd played two great characters. I thought they were hilarious. The voice, everything about it was just hilarious but it was really cool because they mentioned him having an engineer degree which is yeah. how he created this whole house and yes. you know like he just yes. sheds all of his like knowledge of engineering with this house and and you know so all of it from the ground up was just created by him but he values family which i think is kind of cool you know he he's all about just you know, keeping the family together and getting his daughter married. And, you know, I, I just like Buck his Wallace. character. Yeah. <laughs> and then we see in that one scene where Chevy Chase and Demi Moore are separated on the slide. We see the nose removed, the leg, and 106. This man is doing amazing otherwise. I mean, he's able to hop around. I mean, he's got his contraptions, but my God. God. So he lost his leg, I guess, in a war. I think he said something. He lost it in some World War One. World War One. God, that's right. He's got. Uh. He and left it in France. He said he left it in France. France. Yes, that's what it was. And that nose. So again, is that supposed to be a penis of somebody? It could be. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Ronaldo score my god <laughs> so good how far do you guys think that you would have made it through this house like just think of like a choose your own adventure sort of thing would you guys have made it through this house you would have made it through this house 100 because i would have been respectful from the beginning i ain't got no money and i, and I don't do no drugs <laughs> I know. Well, wait, I, could they have gotten out if they had just paid the fine? I can't remember because I know that he just respects him, and that's how they get dropped. But if they had just kind of just paid the fine, and le I, I can't remember, they were about to be let go if they had just done what they were supposed to do. So Dennis was trying to advocate for them. He didn't yeah. say that he's he was speeding because first of all, you would have been arrested immediately in any other place in time for going ninety in a little residential area in this small town. You would and then your license would have been revoked. Car impounded everything to begin with but he tried to downplay just said it was a stop sign incident where he passed a stop sign yeah because i don't think he wanted them to die like you said he he kind of he has a conscience even though he goes along with what he has to do you know it's like i'll just let him pay the fine and get get him out of yeah. here he wants him in like, and out kind of thing yeah just i don't think so because i still think go back to anybody that's affluent or comes off with especially a banker. Being snob and he's a banker i think that was it i think it was either maria's granddaughter from the beginning or it's 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 over for you and to the point with john candy did anyone notice that dennis kind of disappears halfway through i mean i know he's playing the dual character but it almost seems like that character he's packing yeah i think he's in his room he's kind of retired he's off shift and then all of a sudden he hears a whole bunch of commotion and decides to help it also reminded me a little bit of like adam's family when they had their little trap shoot slide outside yes. of the house yeah or not um <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather Demi be at the Adams, though, please, my God. Demi Moore, when she shooted out of that, like, 
Shoot, the way she just sprawled out into the ground. Oh, I thought her comedic performance was good. Do we know her as a comedian in movies? No, I don't really no. see it. I thought that she, I hopefully had a lot of fun in this, especially when you were mocking her earlier with the, you know, get us out of here, go, you know, like save yourself. Like, I just liked how she, her physical comedy, I thought was great. I, agree. I honestly can I think of it. her besides Charlie's Angels Full Throttle, which really isn't just a Ghost. full comedy no but i'm like striptease well no striptease was good i you know i mean she definitely had like funny lines in that movie too you know she played more of a happier is character but not yeah. like this not yeah. wacky like this i don't think I, and, and just like her her instincts to adapt to the twins the way that she was captured Smart. she managed to be friends with them play cards and i love this too because they were playing i want to say slapjack Damn if boy. if i remember correctly and then you know the twins were arguing like oh no that the card was mine and she was like no no no, because he had his hand on top but it wasn't until she adapted their voice and that's when they really listened there's like no because bubba's in because bubba's hand was on top and then he was like ah and i'm like Aww. she's smart she's smart about it and so i i liked her character in this one yeah 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 i know i know we won't lose you hi i'm bobo that's little double hi we're not allowed in the house. Oh, is she okay? Her and the Brazilian siblings were the only two I wanted to get out. I mean, I guess Dennis too, but Chevy Chase, I'm sorry, he was just... Every time he just said something, I'm like, please just shut up if you want to save your life. You clearly see what this man is capable of. But you continue, and you continue to push him, and push him, and push him. Yeah, and like David mentioned earlier, that whole thing, like, get out, run, run, run. Like, that scene, I thought it was, it was great. The end is Chris and Diane got separated. Like Rob said, she gets with the, the mutant babies outside. He's still, he has to marry the, the twin sister or whatever. He kind of escapes, and then they're going to sacrifice her, right? Unless Chris comes, turn himself in, and they have this crushing machine, this watermelon crushing machine. It looks like it looks like the, it's it's pieced together from plows. Yes. Like, and then there's this thing where the judge is talking. He's like, save the girl. Surprise yourself. You know, man up. Kind of, you come, get her, you know? I hate to do this to a pretty little thing like her or whatever. He's like, I mean, he's exposing him for how corrupted and dirty this man is. He was like, yep. you know, think of somebody else other than yourself come save her like he's speaking a lot of the truth he's just you know a maniac <laughs> you know i mean he saves her and they do go on this run they get on the train and they get away and they go to the police this is when i completely forgot this twist ending they tell their whole tale which i think is hysterical because it pans and we see that they're on a whiteboard or a piece of large paper trying to describe this whole compound which is just insane if you had to describe this which is funny because all these people, of course, know, but they're playing it off rather well. I, I wonder if it's because of the times, but it's just like, if the cops really took that much ammunition and back up to this location based on your wacky story, I would assume that they're in on it. Because who would agree right. that this story is true? Especially to send that much ammunition over there. <laughs> I would have suspected something dirty right off the bat. There's no way people are going to believe me. I wouldn't have even went. I, I've never seen a police officer say, hey, Go back to the scene of the crime and grab the person? No. Yeah, it, like, it you don't need happen. us to identify. It's totally, you can go on your own, right? <laughs> Get a sketch artist. Yeah, exactly. And so what does this say about, and for any of our radical ones that live in New Jersey, please, no offense, but Jason, Friday the 13th, New Jersey this area this might be next to crystal lake yeah this is charles lee ray state as well <laughs> like well let's not forget that the supreme was going to banish myrtle snow to new jersey she said strip malls oh. <laughs> <laughs> i totally forgot about that <laughs> The big ending is the judge opens the door and pretends to be this weak older man and he's like, what are you doing? You know, our peaceful thing. What was the whole point of that part? Because he knew that the town was on. I mean, it's a less than a minute of an act, but I guess just for the simple shock that their organization or their sort of mission is actually bigger than what it seemed and that it's not just so like confined to this small little town. And so I, I guess it was just for the shock value 
you of just like, haha, you thought it was over, but it's not, you know, like we get two endings, <laughs> but also just another big showdown because that's when this teased eruption from under them finally yes. erupts. So you wonder if they had not gone through all of this drama throughout this whole movie, if they would just be in bed just a random night and then just suddenly die from this explosion because they didn't cause it. It was just that time to happen, right? You're right. Unless it was because of all the commotion, but no, it couldn't have been. You're right. It just seems like it was a natural occurrence that would have happened. It's mm -hmm. the mind fires that have been going since 1927 yeah. or whatever he said. So <laughs> there is a part when they go up to the steps and he's like, there's a bee's nest behind you. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, hi, everyone says hello. But there is the head cop, the chief or whatever. is like, we're going to have to come to some sort of, he was going to say understanding. And that's when the earthquake thing hit. So I, I don't know. Would they have actually taken them and killed them? Definitely, I think, right? I, th I got the idea that he was going to give them to them to like kind of stop them from talking i mean they made it to the police station who knows if they've chatted with anyone else until they got there i don't know if there are cops who was at the station who aren't in on the deal who witnessed them it, it could be something like that but you're right you know like they did think about making an arrangement or, or maybe there's just still that subtle like i like Chris, I don't want to see you die, you know, especially because Eldona still loves you in a way. <laughs> So I don't know, but you're right. Yeah, there there was some kind of like possibility that they would have lived through that. Did she survive though? Because, you know, when we get our second, I guess, twist, third twist, they're finally, they're saved again on the news. We think everything's done and we see that the judge is still alive. Is he the lone survivor? No. I think the whole family made it out. Made it out Fine. for the sequel. Yeah. <laughs> Except for, you know, the, the cousin. You know, we see her on the crapper and she goes down into the pit. Oh, so she definitely died. She goes like right and so yeah drops like into a molten lava the judge says so she interviews him the the newscaster and he says the whole family yep. survived oh and Don't that's right and they're gonna he said they survived okay Pay attention. <laughs> i was hoping they weren't so no it, that they're going to his son-in-laws right his no son -in -laws. His, his, see his you grandson? banker he's yep he's got ID. the address right yeah <laughs> i love it it's just like those those crazy neighbors or, or family members that never leave your side and they just keep following you you know like you that that was up. an awesome ending I loved it. And then he jumps out the, the side of the thing like out of a Looney Tunes thing and leaves Demi Moore again, Diane, in the shower. Yeah. It's that very cartoonish kind of ending, which is nice in a movie like this where everything else was insane. Would you remake this movie? <sighs> I would totally remake this movie. I really would. And the reason I say that is because there's so much like editorial to this film that they could make it anything. And I have a feeling that we've seen movies like this in today's like audience. It's just not as wacky and crazy as this i think bits and pieces of this movie has been captured i mean just think of saw like all of that is is sort of like not stolen but you can see a lot of saw and nothing but trouble i'm there's always room to have trap doors and homes people under the stairs heavy on that as well i mean they were kind of close to each other when they came out but these movies can make an impact maybe not as a comedy i think more in the horror genre this would favor better to have this crazy fan but just you know like you said with all of the um inspirations rocky horror picture show and these movies are made we like them it's just this man decided to write a crazy movie and script with it but the idea i think is brilliant well from what i'm getting rob and david this was more of a horror movie and the studio kept interfering and changing and cutting and editing and taking more out so they made it more of a comedy than it was supposed to be so i wonder actually how dark the original one was but i kind of do like that it's more cartoonish like this yeah i think a reboot would be great i wouldn't make it i wouldn't make a remake i, w I don't need this movie in particular to be done again but the idea of this family sort of doing their vigilante justice with the crazy fun house i think is an amazing idea would, would you remake it i think originality is kind of going off the window so i think at some point it probably will be remade maybe but i don't know because you're saying it wasn't as popular as we may think it is in our own minds so, so. i mean everything i looks for keeps toning down the but, status which i don't know if i believe it has to have a bigger audience than it is the other thing is is that like rob is saying and we were talking has it been done already if you took a little bit of wrong turn and a little bit of this and a little bit of that you texas you, chainsaw you, kind of, you make the movie already but 
I think what makes it stand out for me is that what you just said. I think if it was more of a horror movie, maybe it would have fared better for for horror fans. But I don't think it would have stood out with because there's the comedy, the com the comedic timing going on. And again, remember I just said when I watched it personally, for me, I found it to be darker than I actually originally thought it was because they are murdering people, good, bad, yeah. or different. But and, it is done um, in a comedy way. You don't see blood at all in this movie. No, and I love the thing. Like I would love to. Go like you said, Rob. Like I would love to. They should have made this a ride in Disneyland. Like, oh my that's god, that's what I was gonna ask you guys. Yeah. Like a an escape room at Halloween for, this with the this as a theme. It's super cool. Super cool. This would be so perfect. Escape room, a haunt, um, just a ride. Like visually, just replicating this house to walk. I just think there's so the junkyard in itself with yep. it being a maze. I just there's so many creative things in this movie. But again when you pair with a script that just doesn't really appeal to most audiences that it's just gonna flop granted that it did not make much money when it came out i think that the movie was made at a perfect time these types of movies just don't fare well unless it's like heavy heavy raunchy i mean granted this movie was killing people and it was done a lot of crazy things but there wasn't a lot of cursing there wasn't a lot of sex involved there wasn't you know i think the movie would have to go there in order for people to pay attention you can't just have a funny dark comedy nowadays in my opinion there has to be some overlying like heavy message to it to take it out you know out of its comedic and then turn a little bit more serious it came out at the perfect time i think if this movie was going to get made so i'm happy it exists so my last question to you gentlemen is at that dinner would you have eaten the ants on a log Not or the <sighs> But those were, but please tell me that this was really, those were raisins, right? I believe they were raisins. They were raisins. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't touch one thing. I would be scared to even drink from the glasses that they use. The house oh. just looked unsanitary. I, you know, I just don't trust it. People are used to their own environment. And then you walk into somebody's house and be like, how do you live? And it's, it's it, that's just how it is. They're used to their environment. So they see nothing wrong with how dirty or clean it is or cluttered i wouldn't touch a thing i would starve and it's the rude but i don't care you'd have to kill me that's when i would die when i refuse the food and they put me in a cage to rot like honestly done Could i do was it. just gonna say like i don't think i would be able to do it either but that mustard pump was the thing that really got me when it stopped and it was all crusty so david what are you eating on that table no, just... <laughs> the pickle that shoots out maybe <laughs> if i was forced to i'd probably have to choose the 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 analog thing but you know i would have maybe put the glass up to my mouth with the high c and it and pretend and put it down and be like oh i couldn't eat another bite and they'd be looking at me nope like, how big I, you I, are. like you don't eat I, I wouldn't have even drank the hawaiian punch because like rob said it's like a gas funnel you thing when came in a metal thing like that Those i bought them pineapple, pineapple juice and that and i bought them putting <laughs> a bag of sugar and <laughs> two bags of oh, sugar <laughs> oh my god there's a restaurant here off topic lolo's chicken and waffle and they have an ATL wings also has ATL on, uh, wings what the they're from that Atlanta for? original they're from Atlanta original oh Atlanta okay. they have it on tap <laughs> They have Kool-Aid, grape Kool-Aid. Wow. Red Kool-Aid on tap, and they actually have the thing. Love it. But it was so sweet, man. I can't. Oh, <laughs> damn. I'm too love old. It. I'm too old. I was like adding some water to it. Anyway. You can go. <laughs> oh, it I goes love back that. to food. Goes back to food. Well, I did ask about the bump on a log, so. <laughs> I'm actually so glad that we got to do this, the three of us. It's not something that we can make happen due to the time zones, the schedules, but I'm so happy to have both Rob and David here for this episode. And especially since they both really, really wanted to do this movie, which I'm glad because, again, it was one of those movies I watched as a kid and I liked it, but hadn't thought about it in years besides the hot dog thing I always think of randomly. Ooh. I will say this uh, for anybody who has decided to listen to this movie i would just go to youtube and watch a couple of scenes like i don't think that everyone needs to watch this movie but just to get a visual of what it is that we're talking about just watch a couple of clips they're insane but just appreciate the old <laughs> school of it all of of the use of prosthetics and just the comedic timing of these actors one that we do no longer have anymore just a couple of clips you'll get an idea of what this movie is without having to watch it and I think that some of the stuff that's on YouTube 
you'll you'll get a definite idea. I I just adore this movie. I just think it's so much fun. And to follow up what Rob said, this movie streaming wise you can rent, but there is a copy on YouTube. But disclaimer, they can't play any of the music. So when the music comes on, it goes silent. So I think the music is actually part of the charm of this movie. So oh my god, yeah, the whole scene with digital underground. I mean, don't don't do that. But it, like if Rob's saying, like if you type in nothing but trouble now you can skim through and see scenes but maybe rent it maybe rent it it is available for rent it does seem though it is one of these movies that hasn't gotten the blu-ray treatment a matter of fact my dvd which i can't find came in the the box the old school dvds with that freaking cardboard yeah the the snap closer yeah no i yeah Aren't you so glad they stopped doing it like that? I don't know. I never liked the cardboard snap close DVDs. Well, it did make my shelf uneven with these, like, different size boxes. But what are you going to do? Mm-mm-mm. You're going to download and pay again. I told Ryan this how many times? I, I just remember when I bought, first bought Janet Jackson's Control album. Then uh, that was on. I had it on a 33 vinyl, and right? some 45, some vinyl. Then... I said, oh no, I need the cassette because it's so much easier. Then I bought it on cassette. Then I remember when it came out, CDs. Then it was CDs. That and was your I first got- CD, wasn't it? Janet was your first CD, yes. was it? And, and, and it was that. And then I bought Rhythm Nation. <laughs> and then now I paid to Janet again for digitally downloading it on, so I can have it on my damn iTunes. So Janet has made money off of me. Ja- so Janet owes her career to David. <laughs> <laughs> Forget the so, Jackson name. I always said we were like the Jacksons just broke. Uh, where's our talent? No, I'm just... No. <laughs> we- <laughs> Any final words, gentlemen, before we wrap it up and send uh, you I off def- to prison? <laughs> we're yeah, all I going to prison. I definitely can't wait to see what we do next. From Freddy vs. Jason to this, what movie are we all going to agree like it has to be done by the three of us? So we'll, I, I can't thinking, wait to see which one that is going to be. I was thinking maybe Return to Oz. That's right. We have talked about that one in the past for sure. The Wheelers, Dorothy, the Wheelers. I think that might have to be another one. All I can tell you is you have to put a pud collar on. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, when you're not hanging out over here, where can the lovely people find you? Currently on the last season of Charmed, I am doing a Charmed recap podcast. All eight seasons were on the final season right now. So tune into that where you listen to most podcast apps. It's a fun show where Ryan and I talk about Charmed one episode at a time. I can't believe it's the eighth season. Billy and Christy David, you know those names. Don't they send shivers down your spine? <laughs> Listen, I I cried the last episode, that's why I have to say. We all cried. So you could reach David at Universal Appeal 2020, all one word, and the Radical Retro Rewind Podcast, one word on Instagram. We're also on YouTube. Next month is kicking off the Summer of the Dead a little early in May. So you will, of course, hear these beautiful voices again. Thank you both for being here with me. Definitely. Bye. Much love, much love. He's right. We gotta go.